Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. And as you know, we have a spring workshop coming up really soon where we're going to be painting this Americana truck design from Art Rave Studios. It's going to be put on a door hanger and it's going to be so cute, you guys. There are lots of different ways to paint this truck. I'm going to show you a few of those in a few moments. But some of you may be struggling with grabbing supplies or just wrapping your mind around this and being in feeling confident getting started. So that's what today's live is all about. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can use this template, even in a smaller form, whoops, that's sideways, in like a four inch size um, and on different things other than a door hanger. So maybe you've never painted a door hanger before, or you've never even painted anything this big. Our door hangers are 18 inches in size. And so I can see where painting something like this might be a little intimidating. If you're like one of those people who's like, Tamara, I can't even draw a straight line. I've seen that comment a couple of times lately in my posts. And I told somebody earlier that said that to me, I said, don't worry, because you aren't actually going to have to be able to draw any Anything in this workshop, you're going to be tracing the template onto things. And then all you have to do after that is pick up a paintbrush and follow me step by step as I walk you through it. Drop a comment if you are signed up for the spring workshop. Let me know what you're going to be painting on. Is it an 18 inch round in door hanger style? Is it a canvas? Is it um, maybe a um, like a, a tray or a plate? You could paint this on just about anything. I see Joanne's here. Hello. Hey, Sharon. Kimberly said, I'm super excited about this class. Wanda said, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Uh, and so just for demonstration purposes, I have already begun to trace this little four inch template onto something. And I've painted it as a sample to show you all. I'm going to show you in a moment. And we're going to finish it up by making it super cute. But I wanted to give you guys some other ideas and kind of show you how to use this template, but also kind of how to resize the template, because I've seen that question a lot lately. Uh, we give you guys the template in different sizes. Um, the 18 inch size is what you're going to need if you're tracing it on a round like this. But if, for example, you picked up one of these cheap little rounds at the Dollar Tree, uh, this one is only, let me measure, mm, 12 inches. This one's only 12 inches in size. And so, um, we do provide you with a 12 inch template, but let's pretend for a moment. Actually, I don't have to pretend. I forgot. I have this one here also. This is a little, um, actually I may give you guys, <laughs> I was like, I may give you the size for this one also. This one is, well, where is my ruler? There it is. This one's actually like nine inches in size or eight and a half inches. So let's say for example, you needed to downsize a template to fit on like a 10 inch round. And we don't give you a template that's exactly 10 inches. Well, how do you do that? You got to do a little bit of math. First of all, you're going to take 10 inches, if that's the size you're trying to get to, and divide that by the size of the template you currently have. So if you have an, a, an, a 12 inch template and you're trying to bring it down to a 10 inch, you're going to do 10 divided by 12. Somebody do that math for me here. I'll tell you what is 10 divided by 12. It is 0 0.8, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, you know, 0 0.83 essentially. So what you're going to do then is in your printer settings, you're going to go to the part where it says print scale. Usually yours will say um, default or a hundred percent or something like that. You're going to change that to custom and make it 83%. So that's how you resize a template to fit something smaller. Um, it's a lot more difficult to, to change a template to go bigger, but then again, we give you an 18 inch. So if you need it bigger than 18 inches, um, I'm not sure what you're painting on. <laughs> hey, Sandy. Hello. Hello. What is everybody going to be painting on? Are you guys all doing door hangers? Wanda has ordered the kit. Thank you for um, bringing that up, Wanda. So let's go into what is in that kit, just in case any of you guys are wondering. Uh, first of all, this is not the kit. Hold on. <laughs> if you decide to get the kit, it's an additional purchase after you sign up. So you initially sign up for $10. And then if you want to purchase the kit, you can grab that afterwards. It is $35, gets free shipping. It has an 18 inch wooden round in it, your printed supply list, printed template, a piece of graphite paper, a brush set, and a fine mist spray bottle. Now that fine mist spray bottle we're going to use to do our shading on this little truck. Um, 
And then just for the $10, so this, this is mainly what we're talking about today. If all you have is $10 to spend, go ahead and sign up because I'm going to show you some ways that you can use the template we're going to give you on things that may be really cheap to find either at the Dollar Tree or in your scrap wood pile. So you're going to get the exclusive template download. You're going to get the matching supply list. That's going to tell you what paint colors you're going to need. Now, don't go out and buy a whole bunch of brand new paints. If you have a bunch of paint at home, use what you have. Um, you're going to have access to our two-day live video workshop with replays and the private Facebook group. And like I was saying a few minutes ago, there are lots of different ways you could paint this truck. Um, you don't even have to put flowers in it. If you wanted to, you could put uh, sports equipment in the background of it and or in the bed of it and make it kind of like a sports truck. Or you could just keep it summery and patriotic like we are and putting flowers and a flag. Um, so, whoops. Let's talk about some ways you can use your template. As I promised, I showed you that I printed this out at about four inches. So this previously was a six inch template and I did the math. I did four divided by six and that gave me my number. I don't remember what it was. What is four divided by six? 0.66. So then I printed this out at 66% scale and it came out much smaller in a four inch size. Well, then I traced it on this little wood block and I painted it and we're going to finish it up by adding a cute little border on it here in a few minutes. Um, but this is like that. Wouldn't this be so cute sitting on like a little tiered tray or your shelf or your bookshelf or your mantle? Uh, Kimberly's painting hers on an 18 inch round. Una said, I can't wait. I love old trucks. Mine will be red. Um, let's see. Hey, Tammy. Uh, hello, Lisa. Hi, Lauren. Um, let's see. Where do we find the Magnolia template? Oh, Wanda, that is inside the Painters Clubhouse. That's something we're teaching in the Clubhouse this month. So, um, we're going to finish this one up in just a moment, but let me give you a quick demonstration for how to take this template and trace it on a shape that's not circular because it's, it's pretty easy to trace this template on something that's already a circle, especially if you've sized your template down appropriately. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate how to do that on something that's maybe a little bit of an odd shape. Um, so I have this little sign from the Dollar Tree. You guys remember me showing it to you the other day. It's got a bunny on one side, but I'm going to flip it over and show you that you can use this template on the back of this. So first off, I printed out um, a 12 inch template. Where's my, here it is, a 12 inch template. I think I might have reduced the scale on this one a little bit to fit this sign. So I did the math, figured out how big my sign was. Um, but you're just going to cut off the excess white space on one piece of your template for now, because that helps us line this up, right? So we've got this piece. Now we've got this piece too. It has a little bit of white on this side, but I'm going to leave that so that I've got something to overlap it on. I didn't quite get that trimmed off. Did I? It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, why not trim off just a little more? Make it make it better for us. And then we're going to tape this thing together. So I'll tape that there. And then there's another piece that goes right down here. I'm going to cut this so it's not quite so big. So this was actually on three sheets of paper. So a lot of times people wonder, how do you get a bigger template if you have just a printer that can only print on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper? It's because it prints on multiple sheets and then you assemble it. Uh, Wanda has the same cutter. I have had that little Fiskars cutter for years and it's an, I, I even got a new one from uh, Cricut a while back and I don't like it near as much. So I never get it out. <laughs> the little blade is always popping out of it, but I really love the one from Fiskars. Um, let's see. Tammy says, why do you divide by different numbers getting multiple template sizes? I'm only explaining that because there are sometimes some people who need a custom size of a template. And so I kind of explained that so that you could figure out the scale percentage. So if you're going from 18 inches down to 16, you would take 18 and divide it by 16. And that would give you the percent you needed to print at. So you would set your printer to whatever percentage that comes out to be. Okay, I'm lining this up. I'm going to tape up my template here. I like to use shipping tape because it's big and it doesn't require a bunch of pieces. And then we're going to put this one on here. Let's see. I didn't trim the bottom of this one. That's my bad. Let me do that real quick. If I can fit it in here. Yeah, I think I can. 
Might be a little tricky. Close enough. I feel like my table's not big enough today. <laughs> I'm struggling with all the things on the table. Okay, so last but not least, we have this little piece down here. And I'm actually going to put my tape on the side that I've cut. That way I can do like this and pick it up. And then I can place this underneath and line it up. And I, I got that tape all wrinkly. I did not do a very good job. But it's good enough to get the job done today. Okay, line it up, tape it down. Okay, once we have that taped, we can cut off the excess paper on the sides if you want to. But I'm going to show you how to trace this on something that's not exactly round. I think I probably could have printed this at a little bit of a bigger scale than I did. Um, now that I've seen it taped together and on the design. But we're going to do it anyway. So taking all that off just to get it out of the way so we can really see what we're working with here. So if I were going to trace this onto this piece here, and I don't want it to be a circle on a rectangle, how can we take this design and kind of expand it to fill the area? Um, where's my graphite paper? I had it. Oh, here it is. This is a really small piece of graphite paper. You might want a larger one if you're working with a big area. First of all, I'm going to lay this on here and just kind of decide, like, do I want my truck um, to kind of be further over to the side? I think I do. I think that will be easier because I can just extend the lines of my truck to fill the space. And then I can just have a little bit of extra landscape over here. That'll be easy to fill in. So I'm going to do that. And we're just going to trace this truck. I'm not going to trace all the flowers and everything right now just for time's sake because it will take forever, but I'm just going to trace the basic elements of this design to kind of give you an idea of how to put this on here. So our flag's up here. Our flag pole. Sorry if I'm missing any questions. I promise I will go back and answer questions in just a moment. My assistant, my husband, <laughs> was going to be joining me for this live. And so I don't know if he got caught up in something up at the shop, but he is not here. He's usually a few minutes late. So you watch, he'll probably come storming in here, apologizing in a few minutes. Uh, he is working diligently to get the shop nice and organized in time for our Painters Clubhouse live event, which is happening in just a couple of weeks. And so um, I can't blame him. He's been very busy with all that. Okay. I'm going to well, I didn't really do a very good job at doing that. Hold on. Let me realign this. I should have taped it down. That's lesson number one. Tape down your design so everything's lined up. Um, I can kind of eyeball it underneath and get it lined up pretty closely anyway. But I only had to do that because my graphite paper was a little too small. So we're tracing on like the little bumper and all the things. Okay, so now that we have the basic shapes on there, do I, I don't have a Sharpie in here, do I? No, I don't. Let me see if I can just use a pencil to finish drawing this. Uh, hey, Cindy. She said, I love the different colors of the truck. I have different rounds and squares. Love your idea. <laughs> Thanks for the math. Very helpful. I'm not good at math, so um, if I explained it wrong, you can't, you can't blame it on me. <laughs> Okay, up here, this is where the top of our truck comes up, right? Where's my where's my template? I think I forgot to trace something. Maybe. Hold on. Let me look at this. Now, yes, I forgot to trace the inside line of the of the truck window, which would kind of go up and over like this. So I feel like y'all can't see that. Let me see if I do it in a pen. That's still hard to see. Let me grab a Sharpie. That just make life easier on all of us. I'll go grab my Sharpie. Hey, babe. All the Sharpies seem to make their way into the kitchen all the time. <laughs> um, okay, so with our Sharpie, we can now trace this design onto the wood. And now you guys can see it much better. Um, Let's see. This goes, I gotta look at my picture because I didn't exactly trace all of this on here. I just kind of did it 
for demonstration purposes to be quick. So you see how like parts of this didn't quite extend out to the edge. So I'm just kind of fudging them and making them extend out to the edge so that it fills in that awkward area between the edge of the design that would have been round because the design stopped right about here, but I just extended it on over. I didn't trace the lines of the flag and everything, but you can see up here at the top, you might want to bring the flag pole on up, give it a little finial at the top and then kind of extend the flag up just a little bit. That looks weird. Maybe it goes more like this. <laughs> you get the idea. And then of course your stripes and things would kind of go down like this. Like so. And then for our landscape over here, um, the landscape kind of ended about an inch from the edge of the board. So you would just take and extend those lines on over just a little longer, maybe add in a few extra flowers and things. But see how that suddenly fills the whole space. And I didn't trace the words on, but the words, you could save this and cut the words out. And then after you've got everything painted, you could trace the words on where you want them. Sometimes I would do that. I would just cut this right out of the middle and then just trace it on where I wanted it. Um, who has questions? What can I help you with? Um, of course, your flowers and things are going to pop out right through here. So just imagine a bunch of cute little flowers instead of my crazy little doodled ones. <laughs> and then you would have a whole bunch of flowers down here. My little doodled flowers are kind of crazy. I'm just kind of putting them on here for visual sake. And of course, you'd have your greenery and everything coming up and around it. But doesn't that look better than if you had, whoops, better than if you had traced the perfect circle onto this, like you extended it out to create the rest of the design? <laughs> okay, hopefully that gives you guys an idea. You could do the same thing on canvas and whatnot. If I were tracing this on this canvas, the thing you would have to take into account is um, the height of your canvas board and stuff. So depending on the size that you print out, like this right here, not right now, I'm on a live video. Okay. Not right now. Charlie, not right now. Do you want to come say hi to everybody? My daughter's popped in here. She, she wants a birthday present. Well, I'm, we're not opening it while I'm on live. You're going to have to wait. I've been saving her birthday because we had her party about a week early. And her birthday's not till this coming Saturday. And so I told her she could open one present every day until her birthday. Yeah, but like, why? Why can't why? I? Why? Because I want to watch you open it. That's part of the fun of giving somebody a gift. Can I bring it in here and open it? No. What happened to your eye? So it looks carrying, like you got clawed by a cat. Yeah, I was carrying the. I, mean, <laughs> I was carrying the calico, mm -hmm. and um, it kind of scratched me in the arm. So I, I picked it up and I said no, and then it scratched me in the eye. Okay. Well, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing a video. Y'all stay in there for a bit. She was uh, let's her. see. Lauren says this is great to do if you have your round board. Hey, girls, can you shut the door, please? If your round board's a little smaller, don't trace the edge of the circle. Just extend your lines. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll make sure she knows that you guys said happy birthday to her. That's sweet. Um, okay, let's see. Decella Dis says, I paid for the upcoming class. I've had a hard time downloading the template. If my link won't come up. I've twice sent an email, but they haven't answered. Um, Catherine, I wonder if, are you trying to download onto a phone, iPad, or computer? Answer that for me, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> as far as them not getting to your email, they've had a little bit of trouble with e emails lately, and so they may have just not got, gotten back to you yet, but they're trying to get caught up. Thank you. She is a cutie pie. She is growing. She's, she's turning nine on Saturday. But anyway, yeah, if you're tracing on Canvas, uh, so like for this, I wouldn't. I would want my words to fit on here, right? So I would either have to scooch it on over like this, and this whole part of the truck would not be showing. So if you're fine with that, do it that way. Otherwise, you might need to scale it down just a little smaller and then, ex you know, work with it that way. Okay, DeSillis is on her phone. Do you have an iPhone or is it an Android?
if it's an iPhone. Um, I believe it goes into the files section of your of your phone. And then you would need to unzip it probably. And so you do that by, by opening up the files in your phone, go into the downloads folder, and then you tap on it because it looks like it's got like a little zipper in the middle of the file. If you tap on it, it pops it up in another file right beside the zipper file. And it's like a blue folder. And that one is unzipped. Then you should be able to go in there and um, print out the one that you want. So try that and let me know if you're still having trouble. We'll do our best to help you out. Okay, um, let's finish up the cute little wood block that I started. I wanted to paint something along the sides of this. So maybe y'all can help me with that. Uh, let's see. I need my little palette here. And I was thinking of colors to do around the edge, like around the edge here. I'm thinking maybe white and blue or something like that, or even red and white stripes. What do you think? If I did red and white stripes, that would kind of mimic the flag here. But I don't have much blue on the design. This tiny little part on the flag is the only blue. So I was thinking, well, I could do like white and blue stripes. I could also do red, white, and blue stripes. Lisa likes the stripe idea. Okay, while you guys decide what color the stripes should be, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, just a base coat of white around the edge. Let me know. Should I do red and white, blue and white, or red, white, and blue? <laughs> Uh, the problem seems to be that the link shows the supply list under the template part. Lauren is watching. Lauren, do you know what she's, what she's experiencing, what she's saying? The link under the, the template plot part. I wish I could just ha have you show me a screenshot of what you're seeing. <laughs> Sometimes that helps. This was just a little scrap wood block, by the way. I found this out in our wood shop. Um, I think it was a little more rectangular, and I had Michael cut about an inch off of it to make it a little more square, because square was what I wanted. But I wanted to show this to you guys to kind of like show you that you don't have to use expensive supplies. If you have a little scrap wood pile or something like that, you could go and just grab a wood block out of it and paint on the wood block, and it makes really cute... Um, decor for your shelf or a tiered tray or something like that. Uh, Leticia and LaDonna both and Ken Lettuce, they red, white, and blue. Okay. I'm seeing lots of red, white, and blue. So maybe we'll try that. I've never done stripes on the side edges of a door hanger or something like that with three colors, but I think it be, could be really cute. So we're just going to give it a coat of white to start with. That way we don't have to paint three colors. We can just do red and blue stripes and leave white in between. But this could also be like a cute little double-sided piece of decor because you could paint the Americana truck design on one side and then you could do something like for fall or some other occasion on the opposite side. And that way you could kind of swap it around. Just be careful when you're painting these edges not to paint over your design. If you're not, if you're doing this after the fact, like I am, I'm trying to be careful and not get it over onto the front. There we go. Okay. All of my edges are painted. Are you getting it from inside the group? Okay. Um, LaDonna said you could go to a house build site where, um, cause they're always okay with you picking up scrap wood. Yeah. We had tons of scrap wood here last summer whenever we were building the sunroom that's on the back part of our house. And I was constantly going out there. I'm like, don't throw that away. I can use that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, any construction site like that, where they've got a ton of wood laying around, just be like, Hey, can I pick up anything that's smaller than like say six to eight inches? Cause they're not going to use that. They're going to throw it out. They're probably tossing it into a, Roll off trash bin. Okay, we're going to dry this. And then I'm thinking I might even put tape like right here to protect my artwork because I don't want to mess it up now that I've painted the front. Um, I don't want to mess it up painting the edges. So let me get out my painter's tape. <laughs> 
Thank you. Somebody said that is adorable. This is our hello, or our, not our hello, our uh, Americana truck design from Art Rave. We are doing this on a door hanger. It's hanging up behind me in door hanger version. Um, and we're going to be painting this in our upcoming spring workshop that's happening April 16th and 18th. And um, you guys can paint along with us if you want. You can sign up at the link in the video description below for just $10 to participate okay where's my scissors i'll show you what i'm doing here we are taping off the edges of the design and i'm not doing a very good job at cutting this nice and straight my scissors are a little dull that didn't really work <laughs> maybe since i'm starting with a straight edge right now I'll cut it above my fingertip here. I probably missed this, but what size template would you use for a piece like this? This one I did a four inch size. So it just depends on the size of your wood block. Um, my wood block is kind of square, not completely square, but kind of. <laughs> I'm really terrible with painter's tape, so don't take any lessons from this. I'm not good at lining this up and all the things. I feel like I struggle with it, making a mess. Just need a little piece right here. I really probably needed like an X-Acto knife to get those edges nice and smooth because it's just to protect the artwork. I, I mean, I, I did it halfway decently. Okay, now we're gonna need our red and blue. I'm gonna use the same red and blue that I that we use in the workshop. So um, these colors are DecoArt Americana colors and they come in a kit. So if you don't have the colors that you need, um, you can get this uh, paint pack from DecoArt. I believe it's 1792 or something like that. Um, the only colors that you're going to need besides those eight are black and white. And so if you don't have a lot of paint at home or not sure what paint colors to get or you're having trouble finding them in your local stores, we made it convenient for you for, by partnering with DecoArt. Uh, Judy says, my sister and I both signed up for the online class. Looking forward to it. I'm so glad. Uh, LaDonna said, I picked up a corrugated tin to paint on. Oh, I cannot wait to see that. That's going to be so cool. Lorna says, is there a tutorial for using the template and how to get different sizes? We talked about that at the beginning of this live. Essentially, you're going to take the template size you have, and then you're going to do a little bit of math to figure out the percentage scale that you need to print your template at. So if you're, if you have a six inch template, which is what I started with for this, and you're trying to go down to four inch, you do four divided by six. So the smaller number divided, wait, no, six divided by four, the bigger number divided by the smaller number. Um, yes. Once you learn how to use templates, it opens up a possibilities for so many surfaces. You could do garden flags, pillow covers, uh, t-shirts, even all kinds of stuff. Uh, do we get the paint or do we, oh, okay. The kit does not come with the paint. You will need to order the paint separately or just shop locally to grab paint. Okay. I'm going to start out with red and I'm just going to use the width of my brush as the size of my stripes. And I should use two brushes for this. That way I don't have to kind of like re-wash my brush. So I'm just going to keep two brush, got brushes going. Multi-talented here. We're going to do red, blue, and then we're going to have white. So I'm switching back to red. <laughs> Y'all decided I'm going to make her do three colors so she's extra challenged. And we're going to do another stripe. Keeping white there. We'll see how we like this. Got a little bit of red paint in my blue. Let me wipe that off. Blue. And then red again. Spacing over. And then blue. And it's kind of making purple in the middle. Whoops. <laughs> it's still kind of cute. I think it's going to be cute when it's done. We'll flop it sideways here. Um, let's see. Next we've got red, blue, white. I need to do blue here. 
but scoot it over so I've got white continuing around from the other side. See? And red. It's one reason why I taped the top off. I thought it might make the whole process just a little less stressful if I'm not having to worry about not getting it on the front. And these are not perfect by any means. <laughs> But y'all know me. I am not a perfectionist. I just slap the paint on there and call it cute. So if you're a perfectionist, that's something you're going to have to get over if you paint with me for very long. We don't sweat the small stuff. Hey, Karen. Glad you're here. If you're just coming in late, I am adding some cute little stripes to the side of this little wood block that I painted the Americana truck onto. See, we're kind of painting the sides edges and uh, we've been talking about ways to use these template this template on different surfaces so uh, a couple of you guys said that you were planning on painting it on something other than a door hanger I think that's so fun um, so I just kind of like the whole point of these workshops is to teach you guys how to use a template to give you guys a little bit of confidence and make you like help you believe that you can do this. Cause a lot of people never get started painting because they have this belief that, Oh, I can't draw a stick figure. So I'm not going to be able to paint. Not true. Um, and I think a lot of people get intimidated by thinking, well, I'm not an artist. I can't do this. And so if I can get you to do a project with me inside of a workshop and instill a belief in you that you can do this, it's going to open up all kinds of possibilities for you. I think of Miss Dina Klingerman, who last week on one of my lives, she commented and said, this work, I put my brushes in the water and was not done with them. What was I thinking? Um, she said the workshop she did last spring with me, the Lola workshop has opened up so many possibilities for her. She has become um, kind of become a door hanger painter now, and she's painting people's pet portraits, which is so cool. Um, so, you know, once you get started painting, it's going to open up a whole new hobby for you. I told y'all he'd come in late. I'm sorry, baby. Yeah, Are you wearing the cape of shame as you enter in here late? Oh, yeah, I forgot all about it. Actually, I just, <laughs> yeah, and the only reason I come back here, they're coming around the pizza. I told them. I sit down to eat lunch. I told them that you were preparing the shop for Painters Clubhouse Live. It's Trying getting to get there. everything organized and looking good. Yeah, and I'm not organizing is not my forte. Does this wood block look like the one that I brought back from the shop this morning? Looks quite it's, a bit different. Oh, you can't even see it. Hold on. You got to hang around until I pull the painter's tape off. Don't it go does anywhere. look good. It would look really good with rounded edges. Oh, shush. He loves to sand things. And so I was like, keep those 90 degree angles. I like a good good square wood block. And he's like, you sure you don't move a router the edges for you? Because he loves doing all that kind of stuff. Routering, sanding, staining. I'm like, leave it be. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to set it down flat for a minute and we'll peel all this off so you can see what it looks like. So you just came up here to get the leftover pizza so y'all could have lunch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> On the way back here, I was like, oh, crap, I forgot all about that. <laughs> well, it's not completely dry, but That's there you good. have it. It's got the cute little red, white, and blue edges. So it's going to sit on a shelf or on a tiered tray. But I showed them that they could take like a little four-inch template and put it on anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big door hanger like what's hanging up behind me. Can you tell all the kids are home for spring break? Everybody's fixing lunch in the kitchen. Charlie, can you shut the door, please? Yes, please. Yes. You left the door open when you came in. My bad. <laughs> okay, give me a it's getting crazy in here. Okay, what questions do you guys have? Um, that wraps up what I was going to teach you guys today. You can even hear the kittens. We have kittens. Uh, Cindy says, that's the reason I say math is very helpful because the amount of printer paper wasted trying to figure it out. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Wendy says, I ordered the kit and got an email that shipped. Can't wait for the workshop. We shipped over 200 kits yesterday. And I think some of them are getting ready to be picked up by UPS in the next couple of hours. So a lot of you 
that ship that bought a kit over the weekend or before, um, if you got a shipping notification, yours is going out probably today. If you know if it hasn't already, and then those of you who haven't got a shipping notification yet, you'll, those will probably be going out in the next day or two. We're we're trying to get caught up. We had to order a few more supplies for some of our packaging and materials and stuff like that. So um let's see the kits do not come with the paint you'll need to order the paint separately from deco art use what you've got or just pick up something at a local store diane says hi michael hey diane <laughs> um all right y'all i don't see any new questions about the workshop so if you haven't signed up already go do so now it is just ten dollars to sign up i put the link down in the video description but i'll also put it here in the comments for you let's see if i can do that there you go. Um, you can sign up right there at southernadormantsdecor.com forward slash workshop. Uh, once you sign up, you're going to have a login that where you can log in and download the template and the supply list and stuff like that. But after you pay the $10, you will see the option for the kit pop up. So if you want that kit, here's what it comes with for $35. The supply list, the template, the wood blank, graphite paper, a brush set, and a fine mist spray bottle. Like I said, the paint will have to be purchased separately, and you can get that from DecoArt. There's eight colors, actually ten colors, uh, black and white, are not in this kit or in this paint pack. Um, so you'll have to pick those up and add those to your cart separately. All right, y'all. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick little craft with me. Can't wait to see what you guys paint in the workshop, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.